three, two, one. Right. Welcome, everybody. This is the first video in a whole series that are going to help you get started in building a discounted free cash flow valuation model. So, can you see a lot of numbers in front of you? This is a PDF that uh, you should have. It's a PDF who, that is entitled Rainbow Chickens, MacFaz, page one. It's recent, recently up to date and it shows rainbow chickens. And you should have a copy of this and we're gonna work from this. Uh, this shows you what to, to produce, but it doesn't show you how to produce it. So I'm going to help you get started and help you start, I'm going to build the first few bits with you. Just so that you can see a big layout here, if, if, if I highlight the, uh, put the whole thing on the screen here, you'll see that we have a horizontal line and a vertical line. This vertical line is separating the future from the past. Ah, okay, the past is it's going to be a lot easier to get numbers from the past. And this horizontal line, this horizontal line, what's the difference between the numbers below and the numbers above? Ah, the ones above have got these little percentage signs next to them, they are ratios, whereas the ones below have got an implicit R sign in front of them or RANDs. So we're going to have to start in the bottom left. This bottom left quadrant, we're going to go to the auditors and accountants and annual financial statements, and we're going to get the numbers, all the line items in the income statement and in the balance sheet. So we need to build a spreadsheet. And you don't want to type in these numbers by yourself. In the old days, we did. But these days, we have got a, a database, especially for you, and if you've watched... Uh, Mike's video on how to install and run the MacFaz database as an Excel add-in, then you'll be ready to go for this one. So I'm going to flip over to, uh, hey, here's my model. It's all done already. Look at that model, all done already. And you'll see this model has been going for some time. No way, it's created in 99. Wow. Okay. This is not yesterday's model. So what we're going to do is I'm going to press Control N. Oh, this is the scariest model of all. There's just nothing here. So let's, let's flip across to what we're trying to do. And the very most important place in the spreadsheet is cell A1. So I'm going to go and type in RCL. Control Enter. Control Enter. It doesn't move your mouse. I mean, move your cursor and while I'm there I'm going to go control alt f3 and I'm going to call this air code all right um, how do we get it to say RCL foods well RCL foods I really wanted to um, I'm hoping there's a function. I'm going to say equals MCF. I'm typing MCF. And the very first function that comes up is company name. Press the tab key. What are the parameters? I press shift control A. It says, ah, luckily it was called share code. Control enter. It says RCL foods. But that's all in lowercase. How do we do that? Press F2. I'm going to use the P-R-O-P, -P, the proper function in Excel. And it now looks right. Fantastic. Okay, we've got two cells to start. Well, let's go and work on this turnover row here. Do you see turnover down here? It's going to be the first row we want to get right. And I see a, I see a code there. Do you see a code? I see 020200. That is the MacFaz code, the same as in the BFA McGregor's system. So it's, it was on row 24, so I'm going to go 020200060 and watch the first, digit, first zero disappear. That didn't work. So we must tell Excel, I'm going to press Control Spacebar and Control 1 to format cells. 
and I'm going to go and make this text. All right, now I'm going to go 0202060, and that stays. That's good. I need to put a whole bunch of these codes in here. Hmm. I don't feel like typing them now, so I'm just going to hi highlight this column, Control Spacebar, and I want to give it a name. Control Alt F3. It's I don't like what it's suggesting. I want to call this MCF Mac Mac Faz Code, just like that. No spaces. Keep it exactly like that, Mac Faz Code, and you'll see that entire column in the name box is called that. Not that, not those cells. But the entire column is called that. Right. There's something else we need because there are lots of turnovers. How do we know that's turnover? Can we say equals uh, MCF? Is there a tag name? I'm hoping this is going to work. Look at that. It just typed in for us. We're not even going to have to type turnover. All right. What are we going to do? Let's go to up here. And can you see there's a bunch of dates on row three? Row three. And there's a special date here. What's special about L3, that June 2019? Sure, it's the year end, date of the year end. And notice sometimes it goes March and June. What's special there? Ah, it's the latest one in L3. All right, well, here I go. I'll move to L3. And I'm hoping there is a MCF latest date. Wow. Let's do that again. Equals MCF. When you get when you found the one that you want, okay. I'm just moving my arrows. Latest date. Don't press enter because it just does that. You need to go equals MCF. Find the one you want and with your left hand press the tab key. What parameters does it need? You press Shift Control A. Already knows the share code. I'm going to press my F2 key so I can move my cursor. And I'm going to delete all the rest and press Control Enter. Now it's giving me the company's telephone number. I really wanted the latest date. So I realized that 43,646 is the number of days since the beginning of last century. So I'm going to go Control 1. And I'm going to go Tab, Page Down, Tab to get me. I'm now number, category custom, I'm in, in the type general. And I want to format as a date. And I just want the month and the year. So I want like June 2020. So I'm going to go ma, ma, ma for June. Notice the sample above. And yeah, 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 yeah. Notice the sample above. That's what I want. Press enter. That's better. Right, I need to put in some dates here, and these are going to be the prior ones. You can't just subtract off 12 months. Looks like you can, but sometimes there's been a year in change. Look at that, March 2010. So I'm going to look for MCF. Ah, previous year. Press done. Press enter. Press the tab key. Shift Control A to get the parameters. I'm going to go and get rid of all anything in square brackets means it's optional and it wants to know the date to go back from. I know that that was in L3. It's going to work. Control enter. Ah, what's happening? Ah, I need to go and format again, but I'm a little bit lazy, so I'm going to go see a format I like. Press Control C copy it, go to where I want to paste it, and I'm going to go Control alt v And you'll see I'm going to press a T because I just want to paste the formats. And look, it's all right. Now, my mouse is getting cold, so I'm going to drag the bottom right little pimple here, and I'm going to drag it across to see. Look at that. While we're here on this row, I want to highlight the whole row, not control space bar, shift space bar. And to name something, control alt F3, I want to call it the date. This is the date. I'm just calling it this 
<clears throat> no spaces and keep it like this. You'll see why in a moment. You know what? The whole row is called the date. This cell up here in A1 is called share code, and this column is called make layers code. Now we are ready to go and put some data in. Equals M C F data. I like the data one. Press the tab key. How do we get all the parameter names? Shift Control A. And if you were good and you named them correctly, the share code matches, the MacBase code matches, and the date matches. If you're in new Excel with dynamic arrays, you need to put an at sign in the front of all of these, otherwise the whole array gets passed through. If you press enter now, which I will, you get an NA. So what you have to do uh, just for now is to put an at sign in the front. Put an at sign in the front. This is the single operator. Now when I press control enter, look, we get some numbers. You can even, we can go, hold the shift. Um, do you see what I'm doing? Put your cursor there, hold the shift key down with your right arrow, tick, tick, tick. Hands up, press control R, and you've got a bunch of funny numbers. But we really want to format those. One way to do it is to go shift control, uh, highlight them again and go shift control and the exclamation mark on your one key, shift control one. Wow, lots of numbers, but I don't want cents in there. I don't even want the thousands. So I'm going to press control one, control one, back into formatting my number and I'm gonna go to the custom and here you'll see a format string. And you can see quite easily that if we get rid of the cents and the decimal place, watch the sample at the top here in the sample box, pressing delete. Wow, decimals are gone. How do I get rid of a whole block of thousands? Well, now you've just got to be a little careful. Some of us have got a, a comma as a thousand separator. Others of us have got a space. And you have to decide whether you're as a space person or a comma person. I am a comma person, so I am going to press a comma right now at the very end of the string. Watch the thousands disappear as I press the comma. Boom. So you can press it again to get millions and again to get billions and trillions if you really want. I'm just going to do it once. Press OK. Looks a lot better. Shift, Control, right arrow, and Control R to it across. Well, it's a bit too wide, so I'm going to press Control Space Bar to highlight all the columns, and I'm going to press Alt H O I Hoy in order to fit. I don't want to have to go and double click each column to get it to fit. I'm going Alt. Let's try that again. Alt H for home, O for format, and you'll see the I. Okay, press the I. I remember this point. It looks a lot better. At this point, you should remember to press Control S. The very important save key. Give it a nice name. Save your spreadsheet because we know this is pretty cool. Now you've just got to type in a whole bunch of codes over the tedium. Or I wonder if there's a better way to do this. Look at all those codes. Do you want to go and type in all of those codes? There's like 80 of them. Or can we just go to and use our select tool? In it? You need Adobe Acrobat to do this, guys. Select tool. And if you go and we're going to go and select the stuff carefully now. And this is not working. I don't want all that other junk. I just want this column. Ah, take that left hand out of the pocket that it's currently in and ask it to just hold the Alt key down. Left hand, hold the Alt key down. And now, if you go to the same place, and you look, oh, I don't want that to come back in. And, whoa, look at that. I'm gonna go Control-C, do you think it's copied it? Please work, please work. Let's go and Control-V, look, it works. I've got that duplicated now. I'm gonna press Shift space bar. I highlight the row and control minus, get rid of it. I'm very excited now. 
put my cursor there, shift, control, right arrow. With my mouse, unfortunately, go and click, double click the little pimple here. Click, click. Look at that. Hey, I don't think you, no one could type in the numbers that fast. This is starting to be a model. Hey. Hoi, Alt, H, O, I. Hey, I don't want all of that as much. I'm going to bring that back in. And this is brilliant, but I am seeing some problems here. I'm seeing some hash NAs. That means the disk is not available. I, I want those to be zero. So I'm going to use the if error function. Put my cursor at the beginning, go I, F, E. Press the tab key, press the end key, comma, zero. So if there's an error, it must put a zero. Shift, control, right arrow, control R. Shift, control, down arrow, control D. Tell me this is working. Look at the noughts come in. Are the noughts there? Right, we've handled our errors with the if error. So this looks this looks good. Um, but how come how come this all the spaces in there? How are we gonna put space? It didn't bring the spaces across. All right, well, how hard can it be? Put your cursor where you want, shift space bar, shift control and the plus key, and you can put in spaces. Three spaces after the 53. Shift space bar, shift control one, two, and three times. Look at that. If you happen to do it too many times, you can shift space bar and control minus will take them away. You can lay these things out. And I can hear complaints already. People's mics are on. That look, operating expenses didn't come through. So if you really want, you can go and control C that and control V it and control B it if you really want. Okay, so you do need to go and put in the very few headings that, that don't have codes. But right now, this is taking you down to like row 76. You've got everything in here. I want to see some magic. If you type in S O L, let's make sure my area on automatic. I'm going to type in S O L. What should happen now? It's Rainbow Chicken's model. As I S O, it's suddenly it's a Sasol model. Look at this. Look at that. I like this Alt H O I, and guess what? You have a Sasol model. If you put in here N. PK, it is a NAMPAC model. So you should see that what we're building is not a rainbow chickens model necessarily, RCL, but it's a model that can handle anything. As long as we give it the code, the Mac phase code, and the date, it's going to give us the data out of the database for our particular company date and line item. Right, so there anything else I need to tell you? This is working well. When you come back, I want you to have filled out, let's use the Alt key, I want you to have filled out this whole block right down to here, please. Okay, can you do that? I've done it for you almost. You just got to put in some spaces, put in some headings, okay? Because when we come back in the next video, we are going to move into this neck of the woods. We are going to Highlight. We are going to be calculating ratios, and those ratios are going to be built from all of these line items that you have successfully pulled in from the database here. So, next video, we're going to do the northwest, the top left, calculating ratios, historical ratios, mostly as a percentage of sales. So, any questions? Send us some questions to Mike or I, and we will now get on with the second video. Thanks so much. See you soon.